This morning we'd like to talk about a subject that I believe is near and dear to all of our hearts, something that we treasure, something that we cherish in all of our lives, and that is the Bible, God's holy word, the scriptures which are given to us to edify us, to, to help us to grow, to keep us on the right path. And to, to make us strong or help us to be strong in our Christian walk of life. As you can see upon the board, the title is Give Me the Bible. This morning we'd like to go over 12 reasons that I want the Bible, 12 reasons that I need the Bible, 12 reasons that make the Bible near and dear to my heart. And I, I trust and I hope that it makes the Bible near and dear to your heart as well. Our opening text is found in Psalm 119, verses, verse 105. Psalm 119 Verse 105, it reads, and this is the one that we're very familiar with, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You know, when studying that and looking at just that one verse, I think it's something that we can reflect on. And it is something we can reflect on daily. It's something we can have in our heart every day. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. It guides our footsteps. It directs us in the way that we go. It lights up the path before us in our Christian walk of light. A light Unto my path. You know, to me, that also refers to that without the Bible, without this lamp unto our feet, we're, we're lost. You know, there's, there's no guidance in our lives. There's no light that's lighting up the path before us. And so, you know, there are several things that we want to go over this morning and look at, and I hope and trust they could be beneficial to you. I hope these are some of the things that you can think about when it comes to the Bible. And again, I just hope they can be a blessing to you in your Christian walk of life, or your future Christian walk of life as well. So the first question we want to ask, before we dive into the 12 reasons, and I will say this also, this is not my outline. This is an outline that's been around for quite some time, but I've adopted it and used it and changed some of the verses for my use and for the presentation this morning. But the first question I believe that we have to ask before we even consider these 12 points is, do you and I really want the Bible? Do you and I really want the Bible in our lives in all things? Do you and I want to consider God's Word in so far as uh, our Christianity, so far as you know, the directions we want to go when we consider questions and directions? Do we consult the Bible? Do we really want to know what the Bible has to say for that? And when do we want the Bible? Do we want the Bible only when it's convenient? When the Scriptures line up with, with our think-sos or maybe our desires? Or do we want it? No matter what, do we want the Bible in all areas of our lives? And obviously, I believe the answer is we do want the Bible. We do really want the Bible in our lives. I do in my life. And I know you here this morning want the Bible in your life as well. And I know all of us here today want the Bible no matter when, you know, no matter what. You know, no matter what the question is, the desire is, we want to see what God had to say, has to say, and so that can guide our lives and be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto my particular path. But the Bible reveals God's will and God's way to men. You know, this is God's will. We're here written in these, in these pages here. This is God's will. This is God's way to men. And so with these few thoughts in mind, let's dive into these 12 points and reasons for wanting the Bible in my life and the reasons that you can want the Bible in your life as well. Now, I will say before we dive in, these are not the only 12 points, obviously. These are not the only 12 points that are out there and the reasons that we want the Bible, but for the sake of a presentation, these are 12 that we want to consider here this morning. I think one of the first things we need to consider when we talk about the Bible and give me the Bible and reason that I want the Bible is the fact that it is from God. It's the only thing that we have in this life that is from God so far as scriptures and study and everything. There's a lot of man-made documents and man-made creeds and man-made books but they're not from God. This is from God. And we have proof of such found in the scriptures. If you would turn to John chapter 12 and verse 49. And most of my scriptures are wrote out. So I'll probably go through these scriptures very, very quickly. John chapter 12 and verse 49. It is God's word. You know, that's, that's important to me because I want to know I want what God says. And I want to follow the direction that God and his son give me in my life. So that obviously I may inherit eternal life. John chapter 12 verse 49 says, For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment, what I should say, and what I should speak. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 23. We'll go through these quickly here. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 23, it reads, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth 
and abideth forever. And of course, we'll, we'll touch on that here in a little bit as, as well. The Word of God is, is everlasting. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. For the Word of God, the whole point of those scriptures was to pull out the fact that it is from God. You know, I don't want to read and I don't want to live my life according to man, according to think so's, or according to anybody else. I want to live my life according to God and follow in His footsteps, follow His directions, follow what He has to say in my life. Give me the Bible because it is from God. Number two, my faith. Why do I want the Bible? My faith comes by hearing and studying and reading God's holy word. I know that's a simple one, but it's super, super important for us to consider in our life. Our faith comes from God's holy word. Romans 10 and verse 17, it reads, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Our faith comes from God. Our faith comes from the scriptures. Our faith comes from studying God's holy word. Therefore, I must have a desire for that holy word. I must have that desire for the words that come from God, as we just quickly proved here this morning. My faith comes from these scriptures. My faith comes from studying what God has to say. The word faith here is definition 4102. It means your moral conviction. It means reliance upon Christ for salvation. You know, you can study over there in the chapter, uh, Hebrews chapter 11. There are many examples there of people's faith and the actions and the effects of that faith. You know, and so we look at these individuals that did this. By faith, they did this. And by faith, they went here. And by faith, they did that. Could we be listed in that list? And I believe we all can be here this morning. But can we be listed in that list as well? Can others look upon our faith that comes from God's Word, that comes from the Bible, and studying the Bible, can we be listed in that list as well, that we have a great faith, and again, it comes from God's holy word. In Galatians chapter 3, verses 20 through 29, we realize that, that, the, that the, this faith and this law it came, uh, you know, when Christ came, we're going to read this, this quickly here, Galatians chapter 3, verses 20 through 29, if you want to turn to that, focusing mainly upon verse 25. It reads, now the mediator, now a mediator is not a mediator one, but is but God is one. Is the law then against the pro promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which have given life, verily righteousness should have been given by the law. By the scripture hath but the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should, come, should afterward be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, but we might be justified, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, which is what we live in today, we are no longer under a schoolmaster, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus." For as many of you has been, have been baptized into Christ, Christ have put on Christ. Neither is there Jew nor Greek, neither is there bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. This is the faith that we live in today. The schoolmaster brought us unto this new covenant, which we live in today. And this is where we here today get our faith and so before we move on here you know are we uh do we have the proper faith and are we getting our faith from the word of god i'm thankful for the word of god i'm thankful for the bible so that i can grow in my faith i can have faith to begin with but i can grow in my faith and have more faith in god and more faith in his holy word number three the word of god is powerful it is powerful in, in many areas and, and powerful in many areas of our lives hebrews chapter four in verse 12, we, 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 we quickly read this verse here a second ago. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. It reads, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God is quick. The word quick means to live. You know, it means to me that it's alive. It's alive in many different areas. The word of God is powerful. It means it's something that is active. It is something that is operative. It is something that is effectual. It is something that is powerful. Thayer says it is something that is active 
in our life. The Word of God is active. It is powerful in all of our lives here this morning. In 1 Peter chapter 1, and verse 23 again, as we talk about and consider the fact that the Word of God is alive and is powerful, is active in all of our lives, and, 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 and it is to live. Going back to 1 Peter chapter 1, and verse 23, I think this, this puts it in a better light, which liveth and abideth forever. And again, it's something that's active. It's something that, that is alive. It is alive. It is powerful in my life, and I believe it is alive and powerful in your life as well. Number four, the Word of God quickens. You know, not a word that we use very much today. Not a word that we consider too often, or as we use in the English language today anyway. But the Word of God, the Bible quickens us in our lives. In Psalms 119, verse 15, This is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. The word quickens means the same thing, or, or similar to, to the same thing that we just read here a second ago. It is definition 24, 21. It means to live, literally or figuratively. It means to make alive. It means to live. It means to have life, remain alive, or sustain life. You know, as I would consider that, and we consider the Word of God quickens me, as, as, as the psalmist wrote here, the Word of God quickens my life. It makes me alive. It is alive. We just looked at that quickly a second ago, but it makes me alive or helps me be alive. It means to, to live. It sustains my life. You know, we, we live off the Word of God. You know, we focus on the Word of God. We study the Word of God in all areas of our lives, and I believe that it does quicken us. It quickens me, and I, I know and I hope that it quickens you as well. It makes you feel alive as we study God's Word. You know, when we study different subjects, I, one area I can attribute to this to you know, so far as making us feel alive, when we study something that is maybe, it doesn't have to be deep, just something maybe we haven't studied before, and we study that, we consider God's Word, and we look at it as from God, and we look at what the Scriptures say, and we do our definitions and cross-references, and we, we realize what something, something is. We study what, what it is. Does that not make you feel alive? That you, can, you, you found out something else that you didn't know before in studying God's Holy Word? To me, it does. You know, to me, that helps sustain a life in many areas. And, of course, we can use these definitions in many other ways as well. Just one area that I wanted to throw out there as well. Number five, the Word of God, the Bible, it frees us. It frees us in many different ways, but obviously it frees us from our sins. In John chapter 8 and verse 32 and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth will free us from sin. The truth will free us from ignorance and error. The truth will still free us from many different things. But the truth, the Word of God, sorry, is the only thing that can free us. There is nothing else out there. Although men write many different uh, works that have great words in them and everything, and, and they make sense, and they're you know, correct so far as grammar and all that stuff. They cannot free us from our sin. Only the Word of God, and of course, you know, Jesus Christ, can free us from our sins. And you shall know the truth, the truth shall make you free. The word free here means to liberate. It means to deliver. It means to, to made free. Sarah, Thayer says it, says it is the act of liberty, or set at liberty, to be free from the dominion of sin. Again, there's nothing else, and there's tons of scriptures that, that, out, that are out there that we could read and throw in here. Of course, you know, we, for time's sake, we can't include them all. There are a lot of scriptures that re reference the fact that the Word of God sets us free from our sin. Along with that, number six here, the Word of God saves us. And it's the only thing, as I said before, it's the only thing that can save us. No man, no woman, and no anybody else except for Christ and God can save us from our sins. Save us in the end. And again, as I consider my life, and I know as you consider your life, we want to be saved so far as heaven and in the end, either the end of our life and in the end of time here, we want to be saved and make it into, our, uh, into heaven. James chapter 1 and verse 21, it says, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Of course, the scriptures here said that you know we that the word of God is able to save your souls. But what does the word engrafted mean? You know, as we consider the fact that it saves our souls, we consider everything that we, we talked about here. The word of God is powerful and it quickens, etc. Here, what does that word engrafted mean? As you look that up, figuratively, it means implanted. And so, as I consider that and consider what we've talked about this morning. And the other scriptures that we've looked at here is the Word of God engrafted 
in my life, implants it in my life, in all areas of my life, and it's just as, as kind of a quick aside anyway, is it engrafted in my life, but it is able to save our souls. Nothing else, as we'll get to at the end, nothing else will able, be able to save us. You know, we'll be judged against this, these words as we'll study it here at the end. And again, it is what saves us and only what can save us. In Romans chapter 1 and verse 16, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. The power of God unto salvation. God's word, give me the Bible, because it is able to save my soul. The word of God, number seven, it purifies us in our lives. It purifies us, it makes us pure, it makes us clean as we study and consider God's word in, in any area of our lives as we, as we try to consider how we should worship, how we should talk, how we should dress, where we should go, and all the different areas of our lives. The word of God can purify us and show us the way. Show us how we can live a pure and godly life because obviously our roadmap is laid out before us. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 22, it says, Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love, of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart, fervently. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the word of God, and of course, other scriptures that show us this, so we can purify ourselves by studying and looking at God's holy word. The word "purified" here means to make clean. It means to sanctify. It means something that is pure or something that has purity. Is that my life? Do I use the Word of God? Is that one of the reasons that I want the Word of God? Because it can purify my life and make myself clean, to, to sanctify my life and give me purity in all things in my life as well. John, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 3, And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. You know, there are many scriptures that teach us and show us, and we also have that desire to be like Christ, to be Christ-like, as we, we oftentimes study. Christ was pure in all things. Well, of course, he was sinless. You know, we can't be sinless, but we strive to strive to be, to be, to be pure. We purify our life because he is pure. And again, the word of God purifies us. The, the Bible purifies our lives. And again, it's the only thing. I can't stress that enough. I think all of us know that here, obviously, that, that, that uh, the Word of God is the only thing that can purify us, the only thing that can save us in the end. Going back to the Psalms uh, 119, verse 105, so for, for number 8, what does also the Bible do? We talked about it for a second here, but it gives us light. It lights up our path. It lights up the way. I mean, there's so many things we can talk about. This, the, any one of these points is a lesson in itself with other scriptures here. But you know, when we can we consider a, a direction in our lives, it is the it is the light that, that guides the, on the right path. It'll never shine down the wrong path. You know, have you ever considered that as you get to a crossroads in life, that light won't shine down the wrong path. That light won't shine down the path that leads to hell. That light won't shine down the path that leads to destruction. No, it gives us light so we might find the right path. And that right path may not be the path we necessarily in our mind would want to choose. You know, sometimes that path is, is a little rough and a little rocky, so, so to speak. But obviously God is there and Christ is there to help us through in our lives. It gives us light in every area of our lives. Psalm 119, verse 105 again. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Does the Bible provide the light for you? Not a light. Not one of multiple flashlights in your pocket. Does the Word of God provide the light, the one and only light for you and I in our path? When we hit a crossroads in our lives, and no matter what it might be, or we're studying something, I mean, there's so many examples we can throw in here. We're studying something between the Word of God, how we should talk, or, or whatever it might be. Do we use God's Word? Does the, does, do we use the Word of God to provide that light? To shine on the answer that we need in our lives. Do we use the Word of God as a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path in our areas of our lives to guide us everywhere that we go and everything and in everything that we do? So number nine, give me the Bible. 
Why do we want the Bible? Why do I want the Bible? Because I live by it. You know, every day of our lives, we live by the Bible. You know, there might be a day we don't crack the Bible open, so to speak. You know, I think all of us reflect on the Bible. All of us think about the Bible every day. You know, there's something that pops up in our minds sometime during the day. Even though we're busy and we work and we do all our different things, we always reflect upon it. At least it seems to be anyway in my life, and I'm sure it's the same with you, that we reflect upon the Bible. We live by the Bible. We live by the Word of God. And in Luke chapter 4 and verse 4, it's, <clears throat> sorry, in Luke chapter 4 and verse 4, it says, And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Do I live my life by every word of God? Do I, do I consider what God says uh, no matter what I'm doing and what friends I'm hanging around? And I mean, there's so many things you can throw in here. And I don't want to get too specific in any of these points here. But do I live by the Word of God? Do I let the Word of God guide me in all areas of our life so that I can see where I need to go? And again, we're we're told by other scriptures, many other scriptures, that we live by the Word of God. We don't live by the man, uh, a man or a woman or a creed or any other um, um, anything else like that. Only by God's holy Word. And what a privilege that is for us to have access to that in which we can live by. Number ten, we we're getting close to the end here. Is it is. The Word of God builds us up. You know, it strengthens us. It helps us through tough times. It helps us through good times. But it does build us up in many different ways, in many different forms. In Acts chapter 20, verse 20, 32, it says, And now, brethren, I command you, commend you to God and to the Word of His grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. And of course, you know, I, th- I can think of other many different examples you can throw up in here. It builds us up when, when we're like a little, little, little sorry, a um, little, little, maybe a little, little, I don't want to use the word depressed, but you know what I mean. I, you know, we're, we're a little down, it can build us up there. It can strengthen us and build us up when we're studying the Word of God, considering which path we can should take so far as doctrines or beliefs. It can build us up. I mean, there's just so many different ways that the Word of God can build us up. But you know, one thing to consider, no matter which way you want to look at, at this example here, is this is the only place we can get built up, so far as you know, so far as scriptures, and so far as any commands here. Yes, we can build each other up. I'm not taking away from that at all. I don't, I don't want you to think we're taking away from that. We're commanded to do that as well in the scriptures. But the Word of God builds us. It is the building blocks that we that we can that we have in our lives. It continues to build us up in all things. Well, as we wrap the, uh, up this presentation this morning, verses uh, number eleven and, and twelve here are super important. I don't want to take away from any of the other ones. I don't want to take away from any of the other points here. But these are two that I really want us to consider as we as we wrap this up. You know, as, as time is, is fleeting and, and, and we're all getting older and, 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 you know, eventually we will pass away if, the, if, if it be the Lord's will. If He doesn't return, uh, send His Son back first, we'll pass away. And there's some things, some things we need to consider as we consider the fragileness of our, our lives and the fact that we are nearing the end at some point in time. The Word of God, it stands forever. You know, this is the only thing that will stand the test of time. It's the only thing that has stood the test of time. Many scriptures have proven that. Many scriptures have, have, have shown that. History has proved that. You know, throughout history, there's been many, many attempts. Actually, I don't, I don't even know how many attempts there's been to destroy the Word of God. You know, you, you read of the Bible burnings. You read of the, of the governments that, that banned the Bible and, and to get rid of the Bible. won't allow the Bible in. Yet, God's Word stands forever. Yet, God's Word still gets in, and still yet we have access to the Word of God today. You know, I can only imagine those that try to burn every Bible they could, they could, they could find or, or, or kill everybody that had Bibles today. If they could look through the stream of time and just open that curtain a little bit and see that we'd have more Bibles today than ever, I wonder if they would have changed their mind. But anyways, you know, the Word of God stands forever and will be here till the end of time. Matthew chapter 24 and verse, 20, verse 35, and actually it's the only thing that will last forever. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Would you not want to follow and read and study and live your life by the only thing that will stand the test of time, that is going to stand the test of time, and that will be here at the end of time? You'll pass the end of time. You'll live on forever. God's word can never be destroyed and never be taken away. No matter what we might do, no matter what governments might do, no matter what anybody might do, God's Word will stand forever. And that's a comfort. And there's a reason I throw that out there here as we consider our lives. That's a comfort for us. Because, you know, these creeds and these, these beliefs, and you can read back through history, how they, they came up with doctrines and beliefs, and they were eventually destroyed. You know, they eventually died off or whatever might have happened with them. 
But God's word is not that case. Even though we are persecuted and we continue to be persecuted in many different ways, God's word stands forever. Well, one of the most important reasons that I want the Bible, one of the most important reasons that you want the Bible is because I will be judged by the, the scriptures. I'll be judged by what is written in, in these passages. Turn with me to Revelation chapter 20, verses 10 through 15. Verses that we consider often, obviously, when we talk about being judged by God's holy word. You know, I've said as you turn to that, Revelation 20, verse 10 through 15, as you consider that, I've said this many times before, I'll say it one more time here. You know, as a welder there, you know, we, we put things together, we build things for customers and clients and, and whoever, and a lot of times we're given codes to follow. A lot of times we're given guidelines. This is how we weld things together, whether it's, you know, how we prep material, how we, where we get our, our filler rods, you know, how we weld things together. We have a guidebook. We have a book that we're going to be judged by. When I build something and put something together, and it's the same with machining and, and, and brickwork and concrete, everything every, everything has a code book out there in, in the world today that I, that I know of anyway. You know, as I build this thing and as, as I put it together, I know that I'm going to have an inspector, most of the time anyway, I'm going to have an inspector come by and they're going to get that book out and they're going to look at what I've done. They're going to look at what I built and they're going to judge what I built by that guidebook. You know, I've, I've said before, I, I would not want to put something together. I would not want to build a bridge and not know what my guidelines were. I would not want to, to put that bridge together and cross waters and not know how to weld it and what I should use and how I should do this and that. And then, you know, get there at the end and they say, all right, we're going to inspect it. And then they pull out the inspection book and how, how silly you'd feel, you know, when they pulled the inspection book out and you'd be like, well, I didn't realize there was an inspection book. You know, we know that there's an inspection book for us in our work, which is our lives. We know that there's an inspection book that will be pulled out, and we know the answers. You know, that's the, the, the beauty of, of inspection so far as welding and machining and brickwork and concrete and everything. Anything out there in life, building cars, I mean, everything out there. There's an inspection book, and you can see the answers right now before you even finish completion of whatever that it is. And that's the way it is with our lives as well. We have an inspection book. We have a, we have a code book. We have a law. That we're going to be judged by, and so far as you know, it's not going to be the thing we built together. It's going to be our lives. It's going to be the thing that's going to be put out there, and it's going to be judged according to what was written in these scriptures. It will judge us in the end. Revelation chapter twenty, verse ten it says, "And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever." And I saw a great white throne, and, and him that sat on it, from whom from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things who were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Yes, there's multiple books that will be open. One of those is the book of life, which we hope that our name is written in. But the other books that will be open will be what we have right here in our hands. Right where we have access to our New Testament for us today. The, the, the New Testament which we live under uh, today we'll, we'll be judged by you know that'll be our code book that is our code book and we'll be judged by this one day you know again i don't want to get to the end of my life and stand before christ however it's going to work and we says we said many times and he'll say well you didn't do this and i scratch my head and say well i didn't know that he says see right here in revelation 20 verse whatever right here's what i told you you can't do this you can't talk that way you can't dress that way you can't do whatever it is right here I want to study that code book. I want to make sure I understand what the code book says, which is the Bible I'm referring to here. I want to make sure that I know what it says because I don't want to stand before Christ and not know about something. You know, we all grow. I'm not talking about growth and everything, but I'm talking about the, the things in our lives. Again, according to my works and according to the way that I live my life, I would not want to stand before Christ not knowing what it says. And again, it goes back to, to why I want the Bible. I want to study it. I want, I want to see what it says in all areas of my life so I won't be ignorant. You know, so I can't, I can't be ignorant on, on the day of judgment. Well, those are our, our, our points we have this morning. You know, one thing to consider is the Bible reveals God's will and God's way to men. Do you and I really want the Bible? As you consider those 12 points this morning, hopefully it can be edifying, hopefully it can, be, can cause you to think, 
as I will say oftentimes, you know, if, if only one scripture or one point edified you or, or, or you could think about during the week or the month or the year or whatever it might be, I believe it was worth our time reading it. Psalms 119 verse 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We'll offer the song of invitation at this time for those who like the prayers of the church. Make your wishes known as we stand and sing.